started. So we're having a look today at advanced Archicad, and we're looking first at file management and customizing your own files. Now the first thing we need to know about Archicad is that there are built-in templates. When we set up, set up a new file, Archicad new, it asks us do we want to use a template. It's asking us do we want, in this case, to use the commercial or a domestic template. And it's saying what sort of work environment do we want to use. I've currently got this on current, but of course we have default and we have some standards, in this case layout, standard and visualization and this gives us a bit of maybe an idea of what we're wanting to use it for. And we can change these as well. Let's just open this first and see what we get. So we're going to use the commercial and we're going to use the standard profile and let's look at what happens when we press this. So our Archicad file is going to open up with its templates with a certain amount of toolbars and palettes open on our screen. It's going to give us some information. In this case it's no modelled information but it's documentation information. So you see here we've got elevations drawn up for us which is suggesting it wants us to model maybe in this space. So when I draw a wall and you sure by now know how to do this. That means that our drawing is already creating, our 3D model is already creating plans, elevations, and I don't think we've necessarily got, yeah, maybe we do, here we go. Let's just move this a bit. And sections. So we could use this template that we get. And the good thing about this template is it has some of these sections and elevations made up. When we go to the project map, it's got folders for us here, design, council submission, contract documentation, it's got a basics area, schedule. Now that won't have anything in it because we haven't modeled anything, but it'll have some settings. We'll get into this a lot later, scheme settings. And it's looking here at zones, conditioned area and unconditioned area which are ways that we work out areas in basics which is great. If we go to the layout book we see that there's folders again, design, council submission, contract documentation. If we click down we see that it's creating layouts for all of our drawings, all of our subcategories. And if that's the way that we're working, fantastic. But sometimes it might be a little bit complex or it might not be our particular style. Now this is great when you're starting with Archicad and you don't want to have to maybe think about it, but as soon as we want to start creating some customized things, it's all just a bit messy. And I find that with my work, there's too much stuff going on. So what we can do, instead of opening up an existing template, we can go File, New, and if I hold down Alt while I'm clicking on New, I can actually press New and Reset All. Now when we new and reset all, all of that inbuilt information does not appear, does not come with the model. We'll still have, if we go into options, element, attributes, we've still got all of our layers, layer combinations, we've still got all our line types, fills, building materials, composites and so on. We've still got all of those because they're part of our template, but we don't have all of the other stuff. We don't have all of the drawings on our page that markers, we don't have the stories, we don't have the view maps, we don't have the layouts and so on. Now that might seem wasteful or it might seem simpler. For me I find that that's better and because this is an advanced class this is the way that we're going to work. We're going to first start from a clean slate and then we're going to build up from there. Now let's have a quick look at how we create a template once we have one. File, save as, there's multiple types of file types that we have in Archicad. The main file type that we'll be using is called a PLN. And down under format, that's called an Archicad Solo Project. Now the ones that we're going to be looking at today is the Archicad PLN Solo Project, the Archicad Project Template, which is a TPL. So like we pressed new before and it said, do you want to use a template? That's what it's talking about. So you can create your own template. And then finally, we can also use an archive project. 
the archive project is saved as a PLA and this is a very useful file type when we're transporting between maybe computers or systems because the PLA is going to save all of the attributes let's just press options here and we see that we can include our background pictures all parts of our loaded libraries or include properties in loaded libraries that means if you have included or linked lots and lots of libraries but haven't placed them that will include them all and this one here means if you've included lots of libraries and only placed a few in your drawing or in your model it will only include the ones that you've placed in your model which is a better way if you're just using standard libraries if you're using customized libraries you might want to include them all when you transport them from one computer or one system to another all drawing so that's generally external drawings maybe PDFs that we've placed in maybe we're trace referencing them and it will also have the ability to include or break nested hot links and ref X refs hot links and X refs are essentially external files that we've included in our Archicad model now a hot link is generally an Archicad file that we've linked from another file and an XREF is more likely to be a DXF or DWG or something like that, maybe that we've received from a surveyor, for instance, or a structural engineer if we're up to that stage in the project. Now, they're the three types that we're going to be using, solo, template, and archive. But as you can see, there's quite a lot more. We can save our files as module files, which is the way of hot linking them back into our file. We also have the ability to save back one version. So I'm currently working in version 18 of Archicad, and so I can choose to save back one version to version 17. Now that's important for us to save backwards if we're going between, obviously, applications. Maybe we're working on new projects, we're working on old projects. Maybe we need to send it to a different system that's got an older file type. We can't go back any further than one file type. We can't go back from 18 to 16. But if we open up our 17 version on 17, then that gives us the ability to go back to 16. Of course, in this way, Graphisoft is trying to keep us current and updated as much as possible. Now, we can also save our files more generically. We can save our files as DXFs, DWFs, DWGs, and these are very standardized CAD files. Generally speaking, they're two-dimensional files which will allow us to export to something like AutoCAD. AutoCAD is the, the industry standard, if you like, for CAD, and that's what a DWG is. Now, that's okay, and a lot of people like structural engineers will want DWGs of our work, but hopefully we're more and more moving towards this idea of IFC. And this is creating a BIM model, which allows us to export not just a two-dimensional drawing, but our entire model for BIM, so let's say again a structural engineer, instead of redrawing by hand or redrawing in 2D, can actually add to our model. They can add three-dimensional parts, structural layers. We could send this to a hydraulic engineer and they can add their pipes. And the ability of working in BIM means we're making sure that everything works together. There's no conflicts. So it's helping that management and it means that we're building a smarter intelligent file which can be used over and over again on different projects. So that's the, I'd like to say that that's the way it currently works but in a way that's the way of the future and we need to encourage particularly in, in our market in Australia particularly with smaller companies to get onto this BIM bandwagon and to use this ICF ability that we can already work with uh, but a lot of other parts of the industry are maybe a little bit slower. So that's file saving. That's templates and that's enough for this video. On the next video we're going to look at how to use and edit our workspace and look at also toolbars and palettes.